Our next founder is Oliver Ellsworth. Oliver Ellsworth is essential to the American Revolution. On my annual draft, he's almost always in the top 20 most important American revolutionaries. He's a guy everyone should know if you're interested in the American Revolution. He was uh, influential in early Continental Congress. He uh, ends up going to the Constitutional Convention, where he is one of the authors, one of the members of the Committee of Detail, which is supposed to assemble and create the United States Constitution. Uh, he, sadly, not sadly, but he ends up returning home a little bit early because there's things going on at home. So he doesn't actually sign the Constitution, but he is a framer of the United States Constitution. He's then sent back to New York because he is an inaugural member of the United States Senate. Now, James Madison ends up not getting chosen as a senator uh, for various reasons, but James Madison goes and becomes a, an important member of the uh, House of Representatives. And he works very closely with Oliver Ellsworth in the Senate to do several things, including creating the Judiciary Act of 1790. The Justice Department, as we spoke about not too long ago, talking about Brutus, uh, the the ju the Justice Department of the United States government is actually left up in the Constitution to be created and overseen by the uh, Congress, the House of Representatives and the Senate. So they get to work almost as soon as the government opens in creating the Judiciary Branch of the United States government. And that leads to the ju Judiciary Act of 17. Uh, 90. And the Judiciary Act of 1790, as I said, basically assembled the United States court system. So, uh, he acts as a senator for a while. Like I said, he works with James Madison. Um, uh, John Oliver, when James Madison writes the Bill of Rights, he sends it to his buddy Oliver Ellsworth, who is the one who presents it to the United States Senate. And then the United States Senate votes to approve it. Now, so he plays a major role in creating the Bill of Rights. Of course, those Bills of Rights would go to the separate states as amendments and have to be voted on by the states, so we can't give him all that much credit, but he did present it to the U.S. Senate. After this, he is appointed as the third Chief Justice of the United States of America. Uh, John Jay was Chief Justice for a while. And then he left, and there was an interim appointment, John Rutledge, who probably would have been a full-time chief justice if he didn't make some terrible comments about the uh, Jay Treaty and uh, kind of talk trash about George Washington there and then try to kill himself. That So John Rutledge, after a lifetime of service and an important founder in his own right, after he's kind of out, Oliver Ellsworth, who helped create the court system in the first place, is brought in as chief justice of the Supreme Court. Now... While he's still Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, Oliver Ellsworth, and this is what I want to focus on, Oliver Ellsworth is sent by President John Adams to be envoy extraordinary to the Court of France. This is important because he goes with two other ambassadors. They go to the Convention of 1800, which we spoke about not too long ago. The Convention of 1800 is because the quasi-war with France had broken out, it was kind of a war, a naval war, but like not really, because we didn't declare war, not yet, not ready for that, USA. They go over and they end up fixing the problem started with the XYZ affair, saying we're not going to let you bribe us, blah, 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 but then they end a war. They end the quasi-war, largely to the importance of envoy extraordinary Oliver Ellsworth. Again, while he's Chief Justice of the United States of America. Uh, he comes back to the United States, uh, resigns not too long afterward, being replaced by John Marshall, who would be there for a very long time, uh, and Ellsworth ends up spending his retirement as an, uh, a special advisor to Connecticut's governor. Because why not? Uh, I do want to note that it's also interesting is that in 1794, you have John Jay, sitting Chief Justice of the United States, go to England to negotiate a treaty. And six years later, you have Oliver Ellsworth, sitting Chief Justice of the United States, sent on a boat across the ocean to negotiate a treaty with France. Uh, and it does indicate exactly how important uh, their authority was during the founding of the United States. Oliver Ellsworth is one of those names that you just don't hear. 
despite the fact that you really should. <laughs> He's essential to the creation of the United States of America. Absolutely essential. I hope you learned a little bit about him. I recommend going and reading more about him because uh, I've glazed over an entire fascinating life. Uh, his involvement at the Constitutional Convention, like I said, I just glazed over him as part of the Committee of Detail. Um, you know, unfortunately, like many people who don't actually sign the documents, he does not necessarily get the credit he deserves. So that's a grossly brief assessment of the life of Oliver Ellsworth. 